When I found out I was perimenopausal, I just thought, I can do this. I mean, I have been through a lot in my life. You know, I'm a, a recovering addict. I was a heroin addict. I haven't had a drink in 30 years. I don't even like taking over-the-counter pills for headaches and things. So I was just not going to go down the medical route. I thought, I'll up the exercise. A few herbal remedies, herbal teas, but none of those things cut it. So I looked for another option. I'd heard of HRT, but I didn't really know what it was. The menopause needs to be thought of as a long-term hormone deficiency. So when we give HRT, we're just topping up those hormones. So oestrogen, if you like, is the building block of HRT. There's cells that respond to oestrogen all over our body. Every single cell responds to oestrogen. The safest way of having oestrogen is through the skin as a patch or a gel or there is now a spray. And what that is, it just goes straight through the skin into the bloodstream. The other hormone used is progesterone. We now usually prescribe this natural progesterone and it's just a capsule that women take. Hormone replacement therapy is the NHS recommended first line of treatment for menopause. There are different types, there are different doses. It's not a one-size-fits-all. And I've got a confession to make. I am on it. And two years ago, it's quite funny, because I wouldn't have told you that, for starters, and I lied to my friends. I told them that I wasn't on it when I was on it. Um, but I thought, just to demystify it a bit, I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what I'm on. It's a patch, and I just stick it on my hip. It's translucent. It's good for any skin colour, like that. But why is there such a stigma around HRT? To find out the reason for the negativity, we have to go back two decades. The Women's Health Initiative clinical trial was a US study of more than 16,000 women released to the media in 2002. You might not recognise the name, but you may have seen the headlines it generated. It was devastating. Overnight, a million of you took your HRT and you threw it in the bin. It alleged that breast cancer increased by 26% when women took a combined pill of oestrogen and progesterone, while the risk of heart disease, stroke and blood clots also spiked. I've come to the women's old operating theatre. This is where the Victorians experimented on us for years. Dr Panay is keen to expose how controversial this HRT trial was. Women were terrified of using hormone therapy and over 50% came off in the subsequent year. <gasps> and I mean, those headlines, I specifically remember how scary they were. I remember thinking, <gasps> HRT causes breast cancer. That's right. But actually what we realised was that the design of the study was far from ideal. Women uh, had an average age of 63, and they were as old as 79 when they were recruited to the study. And of course, we don't routinely prescribe hormone therapy to women of that age group. Mm. When they did another analysis five years later, they found that it was only the 70 to 79 age group that really had the problems of heart attack cases and breast mm -hmm. cancer cases. The women taking part in the WHI trial were on average 12 years past menopause. But because the trial was stopped early, the preliminary conclusions were applied to all age groups, including healthy women entering menopause in their late 40s and 50s. And they said that the data applied to all age groups, so it left doctors confused as to what to say to patients. So many women were suffering in silence. So, I mean, it had a huge impact on every level, really, didn't it? It did. Thousands of women who are on our waiting list are women who have been refused HRT. And it's so sad, the stories that I hear of women who have really, really struggled. And, you know, even now, we're incredibly busy, but I see an extra woman um, as an emergency every week who is suicidal. The WHI was a massive study, the biggest to date. And just to be clear, there was a lot of useful information in it. Reanalysis of the data gives us a more accurate picture. And it turns out, when they went back to the women on oestrogen-only HRT, they actually had a lower risk of breast cancer. 
But the legacy of the initial report is still there, bubbling under the surface. <sighs> but what are the cancer risks from HRT today? That's what we need to know. I, I know I'm in a ball pit, and I know this might seem ridiculous, but this is the best way I could show you what the risks are. A study was undertaken in 2015, which now forms the British Menopause Society guidelines on risk in the 50 to 59 age group. So let's say a thousand of these balls represents a thousand women. These 23 balls represent 23 women out of the thousand that will get breast cancer. These are the women in their 50s of menopausal age who will contract breast cancer regardless of lifestyle factors. These five balls represent the risk of breast cancer from drinking two units of alcohol per day. That's like a large glass of wine. So if you drink every day, you add five more balls and your risk factor is up to 28 in a thousand. These 24 balls represent the risk of breast cancer to women who are obese. That's women with a BMI of 30 or over. So shockingly, if you are obese, your chances of getting breast cancer doubles. And these balls. Represent the risk of getting breast cancer from taking HRT. There's four. So if you're a healthy woman taking HRT, your risk could increase by four in a thousand. To find out if that message is breaking through, I spoke to four menopausal women. So what are the perceived dangers of taking HRT? I think the breast cancer thing is a big thing. And we keep getting headlines even now that say, oh, it's more of an increase if you take HRT. So I think that's a big barrier. I've got friends that won't take it because they've had mothers that have had breast cancer or other types of cancer. And let's be clear, the NHS says there's a cancer risk from HRT, so seek medical advice particularly if it runs in your family or your lifestyle is unhealthy. So the million dollar question is, what percentage of women do you think are on HRT? 40%. Yeah, I think it's quite low, probably 30, 35. I'm gonna say really low because I, I think a lot of women are still very scared because they don't know the facts. I'd say about 20, 5%. Mm -hmm. I'd say about 15. It's going to be really low. In fact, it's even lower. Today, just one in 10 women take HRT. Most women don't, out of choice, but also just from lack of knowledge and lack of support. Menopause specialists believe that HRT can potentially treat more than just short-term symptoms. 100 years ago, we used to die quite soon after our menopause, so it didn't actually matter so much. But now, thankfully, we live for decades. Without these hormones, there's an increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, even things like dementia. 